The union that represents correctional officers here in the state filed a federal civil lawsuit against the state and the Department of Corrections in an effort to overturn legislation that will limit the use of solitary confinement in prisons. Correction officer Hayes says she was attacked in a prison last year and is worried about the effects this new law will have. If it wasn't for someone hearing my screams, I don't know how this situation would have turned out. I was viciously attacked. The HALT bill is designed to help the most violent incarcerated individuals. The HALT bill is also designed to hurt those who protect and serve the state of New York. New York State Correctional Officers and Police Benevolent Association, or NYSCOPA, officials argue that crime inside state prisons has spiked over the last decade. They say without the use of solitary confinement, there is no fear of punishment among those incarcerated. The Humane Alternatives to Long-Term Solitary Confinement Act, or HALT, was passed by lawmakers earlier this year and places a 15-day cap on how long a person can spend in solitary confinement. John Roberts with NYSCOPA says this is not a long enough cooling off period, especially since those in solitary confinement are granted the same access to services as the rest of the general population. The violent, unprovoked attacks like this, inmates will receive 15 days in segregated confinement with a hot shower, an iPad, a phone that he can call with his family, he has exercise available, and visitation, 15 days. Where's the justice in that for the officers? Jerome Wright with the HALT Solitary Campaign points to how the HALT Act will not go into effect until next April and says if there is a rise in crime, it is hardly connected. If they're saying that violence has escalated since 2012, then actually the tool you're using is not effective. And the community, the people of the state of New York, which the phrase they like to throw out, have demanded that we go in a new direction. And that new direction is halt solitary confinement law. A spokesman for the Department of Corrections sent a statement in response saying the state has zero tolerance of any kind for violence in state prisons. However, they will not be commenting on pending litigation at this time. Reporting for Spectrum News, I'm Morgan Mackay. When they opened the door and then the door closed behind me, my life went with it. I walked right into hell. They call it the box. The whole, the atmosphere itself is closing in on you. You know, you get this feeling where you, you're being smothered almost, you know. It's a place where many lose their mind. Their connection to the world is being stripped away. I've seen men cut their arm, wrist, their neck. Oh, they're just going insane. Nothing they say makes sense. Solitary confinement is seen by many U.S. prison staff as essential to keeping order. What do we do with the individual that gives another inmate 150 stitches across his face? But should it be legal? If I commit suicide, it's because of solitary. Deep South, Mississippi. I'm on my way to meet a man who spent a lifetime as jailer to the most violent criminals. Burl Kane believes there are some prisoners who need to be sealed up alone in solitary indefinitely. The most dangerous prisoner is the sexual predator that's like the lion in the jungle, the serial killer, the one who don't even know you but he attacks and he kills you. They're really dangerous, and I'm not sure you have any cure for them. Those people you have to put away so you can't ever let them get away. Cain, an active Christian, believes solitary can change inmates for the better, and says nowadays solitary is nothing like as bad as people imagine. So you don't want them in there. So prison, that's old timey dungeon type thing. We don't want to do that at all. You make people crazy in there. And then you have to get out of the cell every day and have exercise, a place to walk up and down a tier and so forth. 
That still means 22 hours or more a day in a small cell. Organizations that monitor the use of solitary estimate over 60,000 inmates are in isolation and say the numbers have spiraled since the pandemic. It look how they drag the man, man. It look how they drag the man. The man cut both of the ribs. Suicides are common in prisons across America. This is contraband footage said to have been shot by an inmate in Mississippi last year. A prisoner had slit his wrists. It's crazy, man. Studies suggest that those held in solitary are six times more likely than other inmates to kill themselves. You said that was the yeah, segregation the, unit, right? Segregation unit. Can we go see inside the solitary, the, sol it, the it segregation will, unit? It would not be good because of COVID and all. sleeping and I woke up and the bunk above me was was right there you know about a couple of inches from my face you know that was your perception yeah and I couldn't move you know so you and felt like you were being yeah literally that, that boxed was being in. pressed down you know by, by the very atmosphere itself Homer Venter worked as the chief medical officer at Rikers Island Jail, New York. I have had many patients who uh, very quickly uh, develop the ability of solitary confinement to cause psychological harm can be very acute and it can happen very quickly. Far off the beaten track in the backwoods of Louisiana is the prison. This one, a glimpse into a closed world. How are you doing? Hello, hello, Lee. Billy said prisoners threw feces and screamed all night in solitary. He's had to fight off insanity. I've seen mentally ill people rock back and forth, back and forth. I started rocking and then I caught myself. This is what crazy people do. Next thing you know, they're playing with feces or, or urinating on the floor. I didn't want that to happen to me. You consciously stopped yourself from going insane. Well, I don't know if that's what did it, but that's what I have done. The United Nations has defined more than 15 days in solitary as torture. Do you, what do you say about, about that? I'm not torturing them because I'm going to feed them good and we're going to try every day to get them to come out of there and live peacefully with the others. But until he says that, until he wants to act right, I have no choice but to protect the others, leave him over here. As decades of his life went by in the box, 
Albert Woodfox held on to his sanity. The memory of his mother, his strength. But on the day of her funeral, he was still trapped between his four close walls. I lost my mind. I actually thought it, thought about commit, committing suicide. The only time in 44 years, 44 years, 10 months that I ever considered taking my own life when I lost my mind. Woodfox, accused of killing a prison guard, has always maintained his innocence. He was released in 2016. The length of his incarceration shocked many around the world. He's become a leading figure in the fight against solitary. Over a thousand miles away, New York. A city whose leaders see solitary as wrong and have started limiting its use with a view to banning it. But corrections officers in New York are furious. One of their leaders, Benny Bossio, says the reforms have been a disaster. There's an increase in assaults on correction officers, up 23%. We have to be able to segregate those people because, you know, if we have a society without consequences, then we'll just have total anarchy in our streets, total anarchy in our jails, which is, is pretty much happening now because the consequences for inmates have been so watered down and they know it. Isn't the problem that many of those in solitary are not the really dangerous criminals? They're people who've broken minor rules or are suicidal? That, that's just not the case. Minor infractions, people do not end up in, solid, in um, punitive segregation. But what happened to Candy Haley, a mother of two and childcare provider? She was held at Rikers on an attempted murder charge that was later dropped. Candy was put in solitary after an altercation with a guard. Accused of other minor offenses, she was kept in solitary for three years. If hell had a description or a definition, it would be solitary confinement. The cell was like a, a elevator that you're stuck in for 24 hours. Locked in her cell almost around the clock, Candy decided there was only one way out. All you're thinking about is trying to kill yourself. I swallow pills, I cut my arms, take a spoon or a fork or whatever I could find, a pencil, a pen, whatever I could find to cut my arms up. Rikers Island Jail wouldn't comment on Candy's case, but pointed out that New York's making groundbreaking reforms. Solitary destroyed Candy, a previously functioning and healthy adult. So, what does it do to children? That's him. And this is Ronnie Peterson's home in Shreveport, Louisiana. And this is adopted 13-year-old son, Solon. He loved to play hockey. That was his favorite sport. He was gifted with music. He loved playing guitar. He could talk to anybody and made friends easily and just wanted to have a good time with everyone. It was a Friday in February 2019. Solon, who had ADHD, had set fire to a bin at his school. He was taken to a juvenile detention center. Like other children, he ended up in solitary for misbehaving. Children left in these cells alone deteriorate quickly. A few days later, Ronnie was finally allowed to see his son. I could talk to him through a little bitty four inch window and talk to him through the door and see him through the window. And you could tell it was kind of breaking him down. He was punching the wall and his, his knuckles, I remember, were a little bit bruised. We were told that he was going to get out that night or at the latest the next morning. But he didn't. This footage shows the corridor outside Solon's cell on his fifth night in solitary. In the dead of night, an officer realized Solon had hanged himself. I uh, got a phone call at two o'clock in the morning saying that he was dead. Solon's parents gave permission for use of this footage. 
They want to highlight the horrific consequences of putting their 13-year-old in solitary. I think I was more in shock than anything else to where you don't really feel a whole lot in the moment. Um, uh, you kind of go numb and you're in shock. I mean, he's a normal teenage boy um, and he was happy most of the time. Ware Youth Center says it can't discuss individual cases for legal reasons. Research shows that in the year after release from prison, former inmates are nearly twice as likely to kill themselves if they've been in solitary. If I commit suicide, it's because of solitary, if I ever succeed. Solitary confinement is torture. I'm here with you physically, but I feel like I'm going to wake up and it's going to be, I'm going to be back in solitary, like this is just a dream. Because it's so unbelievable that I went through that. Benny Bossio still believes strongly that solitary is an essential tool for keeping jails safe. If you're allowed out of punitive segregation and you do not change your behavior, and you, what do we do with you? That's, that's the magic question, right? I've been to many prison settings where uh, people come out of their cells for several hours a day. They may engage in programming and even interaction with others, but it's in a way that's secure, where they're not.